low-hanging fireworks. Mother woke up tangled in stars. Father dropped the planet and watched as it rolled beneath the couch. Her music was straight as a prairie road. His was bent like an elbow to the gut. He preferred the company of dogs, she of me when I felt like one. He proved that there are no happy alcoholics and that love is conditional. She that mushrooms can push through asphalt and that cancer comes without a screenplay. The cookies she baked were chocolate chip, but I always wound up with raisin. He taught me to fish, but each one I caught swallowed the hook. He tried to be anonymous, but the rest of the world ignored him. Some nights he played heads like percussion instruments. Some days her migraines were low-hanging fireworks. In his last hours, he became a derelict house, the handle disintegrating when I tried the door. In hers, she became as light as the earth, if all that was holy on its surface had taken off and flown away. Quaternary Megafauna Handbook Throw heat at the man in the street. Give him your sweater because you're cold. Tend to his bruises when he's beaten from fighting traffic. Put him in a spacesuit to get through news cycles. Feed him art when he's hungry. All paintings are self-portraits of everybody. He needs to digest this. Love him like a brother. Love him like Oedipus. Well, maybe not, but at least love him more than a smartphone. Iron his clothes, but don't starch his underwear. The world is hard enough already. Take his bankers to dinner and give them blowfish and random mushrooms to remind them that sometimes food fights back. Teach his wife how to waltz so she can dance around his bullshit. Be nice to his cat. It's got dirt on you. Be nice to his kids. You drop their future. Give him flares for nightlights so he can find his way home from his dreams. Give him wings to make his problems seem small. Give him oven mitts so he doesn't burn up on re-entry. Teach him to sing because that's the only way people will listen when you complain. Gather kindling so he can torch his mistakes. Confiscate his regrets, the ones he takes from his pockets now and then to brush the lint off and suck on. Visit him in hospital. All doctors carry scythes. Be a shoulder to cry on. Be a boulder to die on. But wait till he's dead before grieving. If you want people to visit his grave, carve his tombstone out of cheese. Everybody likes cheese. And don't forget for a second that while he lives, his burdens are yours. Nor must you underestimate their magnitude. Even the skeleton of a mammoth weighs over a thousand pounds. The Compass in Her Breast Samantha steps with confidence on ground as soft as a bruise, away from her sidewalk ocean to a metropolis of tents. She was born to be somewhere else, grew up to be the type of person who goes home by not going home. The last job she had was erroneous, until she read her name chalked between the potholes. So she surfs on mattresses in squats like a migratory bird drawn by the compass in her breast. She was engaged to a man who was told by her brothers that an open hand was okay, but if he used his fists, they'd come for him. They never came. She'll open the door once she learns you're an ally, but just a crack to show there's light on in the room. Yet she has no use for Teflon compassion, giving boot print remedies to hearts that need sutures, and preaching graffiti gospel about a lord that exists in the wisdom of her fingers, not the one so adept at hide-and-seek she quit counting. She has seen enough deaths to know that living is not always deliberate. Her laughter sounds like a pigeon taking off, 
her crying like nothing the devil has ever heard. Her shoes are clean. She washes her hands. She wears a toque with monkey ears. And she carries a volume of fairy tales to be read after sex, so she can sleep between the pages of a book, a special one, where the wolves are your friends, where you can't OD on the magic beans that take you to places in the clouds you can settle in. Rhyming Suggestions Don't use morning, warning. Use instead advent, portent. Don't use night, light. Use darkling, fulgurating. Not cool, fool, but brumal, goofball. Not wild, child, but uncouth, youth. Don't use boy, toy. Use grown-up, own-up. Not chick, trick, but woman, recognition. Not thin, in, but thriving, striving. Not crazy, lazy, but independent, confident. Not red, dead, but nothing. Not brown, down, but nothing. Not black, back, but nothing. Not white, right, but nothing. Not face, race, but nothing. Teachable moment. They have no right to complain. We stole this land from them fair and square. Actual quote from a grade nine student. Is like saying we hurt them helpfully. We loved them invidiously and they trusted us inaccurately. Is like saying they were desolate joyfully and their faith was a fault. Is like saying that we nursed them poisonously and that we taxed them generously. It's like saying we governed gratefully and legislated innocently, that their public was our private, that their spirit was our currency, and their treaties our property. It's like saying our pledge was circumstantial. It's like saying their independence was our responsibility. It's like saying their talents were inelegant, that their efforts were for us, and that their land was an abstraction. It's like saying that their territory needed shacks, that their trees wanted machinery, that their lakes required industry. It's like saying that their lives were to be mourned, their deaths unlamented, and that incarceration was our gift. It's like saying their men were unremarkable and their women didn't exist. It's like saying that our progress wasn't culpable, that our pleasures weren't guilty, that our money had a conscience, that our innocence wasn't amnesia, and that no matter what, we could always escape the hole by climbing the dirt we piled above it. Breakfast on Pluto. She has a lawn chair on the surface of an outer planet where it's always minus 200. She moved there 20 years ago when someone usurped the role of God, turning her trust into a pillar of salt. Yet she has never been unfaithful. She only stays awake one night of the year, asking, why me? And she fills the holes in her deontology with grieving. She recycles my footprints because these will keep her warm. She accepts my coat because a garment is a violation in reverse. I want to know how long she must wait before completion returns. She smiles through the cold and holds me. She tells me to wait a few orbits. She tells me to wait till the sun rises big and bright and warm enough 
to thaw a sea of frozen methane. Dead name. She gave it the double-edged life hack, cut the umbilicus to her dead self, because her house has a typewriter cerebellum where she taps the earworm of her appetites, but her garden was a no-go zone of cats pissing on weeds and poisoning the soil. But now sailors mistake her semaphore for metaphor, distress flags for pennants with the logo of the football club that earns bricks in the stands. Dictionaries shut up around her, functionaries speak down about her, adversaries sneak up behind her. And the bodies of her friendships pile like nighttime sparrows lost in counterfeit sunlight, hitting very real windows. So during the times she doesn't want to jam for once and all the mainspring of the machine she lives in, she wanders bruise-colored badlands, stared at by the dry eye of the moon, bowing and scraping each timid step like the great con's wet nurse, barefoot over fish hooks, toward a bed as comfortable as a pile of antlers. Five Conversations with the Moon The moon rises dripping from his bath in the sea. He reassures me. Yes, some ships keep sailing even after they've wrecked. The moon observes my unapologetic field work, keeps his hands to himself. He whispers in my ear, I'm going nowhere. Follow yourself home. The moon admits to being a low wattage bulb, a djembe with a torn head, a 45 RPM spindle adapter. The moon admits to being the period at the end of this sentence. The moon is breathless from granting me wishes, but draws the line at stopping time. Continue, he orders. The end will begin before the beginning has ended. As he sets, the moon tells me, I am your mother's beret on a hook, and the stars are footprints full of water where your father wandered lost across the sky. <laughs>